about fascia restrictions and how they affect our spine, specifically about spinal rotations, the rotation of our ribs and our pelvis. So I'm going to torture Aaron over here and do what you've seen me do before, but then I'm going to show you how it doesn't just bend him to one side, but as it bends him, how it rotates his spine. So we're going to give Aaron a good old myofascial restriction here, right? Really squeeze him down, okay? From here, you can see that Aaron is bending to adapt around this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn sideways so you can see what's happening at the pelvis and ribs. So let's turn sideways, Aaron, so that they can see, right, that this restriction over here, can you see that it's pushing his pelvis forward? And can you see that his right rib cage is sticking out behind him? So if I straighten up and I let go, you're gonna see the rib cage is gonna level with the pelvis. But again, as I pull down and side bend him, there you go, you're gonna see that rib cage go in the back of the pelvis, the pelvis rotates forward. And that is very ouchy in the spine. Now, let me show you on the skeleton what that looks like. And so Aaron, go ahead and bend to the side like I'm pulling you, right? We've seen this. But then what happens is Aaron turns sideways for me, keep that side bend, and bend a little bit further down and in, and you're gonna see his ribs rotate back, his pelvis rotates forward, okay? And that always happens. That always happens. When the spine bends, there is an associated rotation. So it's really important that you don't just think of it kind of in these two dimensions, but that there is also this component of rotation that is always involved in a fascial restriction.